2011 in Denver, Colorado. I'm here with Brett Porter, the new brewmaster at Goose Island Brewery in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, so we're drinking here, Jillian. Tell me a little bit about this beer. Uh, this beer was, uh, it's a Saison, but it is, it's flavored with strawberries, white pepper, and it goes through a secondary fermentation that is, uh, the carbohydrate source is, is honey, and uh, instead of using uh, a Belgian yeast, we're using champagne yeast. So it gives it a little drier finish. And one thing I like about this beer compared to the to other honey beers is that the, the honey character uh, blends right into the other flavors. So it doesn't stick out like, oh my goodness, there's honey in here, and oh wow, there's it sure has a powerful strawberry flavor. And what is that yeast character? It's not really a Belgian yeast. Um, so. It is a beer that is going to join our 2012 portfolio um, as a vintage reserve beer. And vintage reserve beers for us are the most, they're, along with the, our bourbon barrel aged Bourbon County Stout, they are the, uh, they're really the things that we are most proud of at our brewery, the hardest things for us to make. So this beer will likely spend, uh, this beer will likely spend a year in a, uh, in a, in a wine barrel. So. So has it aged in a wine barrel? Has this that we're drinking now aged in a wine is, barrel? This is, a, uh, this is our third version of it. This, a portion of this was aged in a wine barrel. This is a stainless version. So um, it still came out wonderfully well, but we're gonna use, we're gonna, we're gonna barrel age it, I think. So, but it's sort of a work in progress. We're, we're trying to decide which one we like best. We've made it three times and um, it, uh, it's, We've liked different things about different batches. So um, we'll, it, we'll see how it goes. And we'll release the beer when it's ready. I say 2012, if we don't like it, we'll continue to age it or we'll dump it, try it again. So, but this has been a this has been a favorite at festivals and all the events, special events that the Goose does. And it was this beer was developed by one of our brewers. His name is Keith Gabbett. And um, in his spare time, when he's not brewing 24 hours a day, you know, or he doesn't have a shift where he's working 50 hours a week, he came up with the idea for this beer, and it is wholly his. We've had, um, and that's that's one of the things we're trying to do at Goose Island, is uh, is encourage the uh, the creativity of our brewing staff. And the way we're doing that this coming year is we've grouped the the brewing staff and other interested parties in the brewery. So we've got an engineer who's in one of the brewing groups, one of the innovation groups, and every two months, a new brand that they come up with is gonna come out in the Chicago marketplace. It'll be marketed at 30 uh, retail locations. You know, it'll draft only, and um, we'll see where, it, hopefully it'll be the test bed for some new some new permanent brands. So, that's, that's really nice, I like the, I like uh, uh, more and more breweries seem to be doing this, sort of letting their, their brewers, the, the floor brewers, the, the ship brewers, uh, take over beers and, and really fly their creativity. So it's not just somebody like yourself, the brewmaster, saying brew this. Yeah, I mean, you run out of ideas after a while, but the, but the group, the, our brewing group never runs out of ideas. And I, I would rather uh, we succeed as a team than become uh, the, you know, the figurehead of the brewery. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in, in us succeeding as a group. And um, I'm, I'm particularly interested in in uh, letting the, the brewers, and it's not just brewers. Um, oh, as I said, we have an engineer who's joined one of the groups. We also, the, the woman who uh, answers our telephone is, has joined our group. And I, she'll end up being a brewer at our, at our brewery. But, um, so, let these people have, a, let these hardworking people who do the work every day um, have a stake in the, uh, fu the future of our brewery and make them more connected with what's happening from day to day. It's, it seems like, a, no, I can't lose. I'm gonna look good no matter what happens, you know? These guys are gonna do, uh, the, the, some of the ideas already are just, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're very innovative and they're, they're gonna produce some wonderful beers. And I made a promise to them that I would say no to nothing. So what's, here's what scared me a little bit. One of the brewers came to me, there was an article in the New Yorker recently about 
uh, entophagy, the eating uh, insects. And he, he, was, he was very interested in this article, and I thought, here it comes. I know what he's going to do, and he's already heard me say, I'm not going to say no to anything. So, but I think that that idea has been deflected. I didn't have to do it, though. I think his partners did it for him. So, anyway. well, He wanted to put bugs in beer. I think he wanted to put bugs in beer. But, you know, but we already are putting bugs in beer. You know, we're, we're putting, we're, we're using, uh, you know, we're, we're using, uh, we're using so much Britannomyces bruxellensis in our beers. And um, we've got the, a... So, another while, since you brought up uh, Britannomyces, I know I've talked to you a, a couple of times about this whole process you're you're undertaking to to better understand how Britannomyces works so that you can get better quality and better consistency in the beers that you make with Britannomyces and I find this really fascinating so uh, talk a little bit about that well um, it is a fascinating uh, it's a fascinating organism and we're just beginning to scratch the surface of what we can learn about it and um, it is We've had a couple of really, uh, we've had some, we've had some stunning failures and some fabulous successes. And luckily, the fabulous successes have been lately. And one of the one of the successes that we've had is that we've been able to uh, propagate Britannomyces. It has very specific wants and needs. It wants oxygen, but only for a certain period of time. It wants a, it wants to see a lowish pH for a while. It wants. Um, a time where um, it, it has its own requirements. It grows at its own pace. It grows very slowly to begin with, and then you can do things to it to make it grow very quickly. And so we're creating, we're, we are propagating uh, Britannomyces at a, uh, what I think of is almost of an un unheard of cell concentration. So we're getting, uh, it doesn't mean anything to, to most people, but 600 to 900 million cells per mil. It's very, very high concentration of uh, Britannomyces, and that allows us to do things with uh, in our beers that other breweries can't do. We can add the Britannomyces at a at a concentration that uh, that no one that really people would never think of doing. Now, and another interesting thing that we've been doing is we have been looking at the markers that the the, the chemical markers that are created by Britannomyces, and when we what I mean by that is we're looking for the these certain uh, we're looking for certain compounds uh, that give the uh, beers that have a secondary fermentation with Tannomyces a particular flavor, and we've identified two compounds, and we now have begun to uh, we now know what is the desired concentration for those compounds and how long it takes in our beer for them to form, and. The only way that we were able to do that is with our uh, our association with Anheuser Busch. We said, "Okay, th we're, we think this is how long it takes for the Brett character to develop in these beers, and then we're, we're, this is what we'd like to try." And what we needed to have was a, a machine called a GC Olfactory Mass Spec, and it's a uh, it's a fancy gas chromatograph that allows you it, it shows you the concentration of of uh, these compounds in your beer, but it also uh, volatilizes the compounds and it had, there's a nose piece that the operator can smell and he can smell these particular compounds. Yeah, so, I think I think once when we talked before, I described it as uh, like a fancy uh, electric sm electronic smeller and human smeller combined, sort of. What we found, though, is that our noses have worked as well as the GCL factory mass spec. Our idea that two weeks for Two weeks for um, uh, of uh, maturation time uh, or, or secondary fermentation with Britannomyces uh, has, was the right amount of time before we bottled it. We, that we, it turned out to be true, and and backed up by the data that we've seen from the GC Olfactory Mass Spec. That's nice. hard to say. GC Olfactory Mass Spec. It is hard to say. <laughs> it's, so, it, may, it sounds like a complicated piece of machinery. It is. Brewery that has one is Sierra Nevada, and they have, uh, you know, they've been they're pioneers. They they do they're always a few, a few steps ahead of everyone else when it comes to really interesting projects. And um, I drooled over that thing. I wanted one so bad. In fact, I wanted one so bad that um, I was about to go rent some time with one in Texas to do this work. And 
then the merger happened, and now I don't need to. So, so uh, I apologize to uh, any viewers out there for whom we're getting too geeky, but I'm a geek. I'm sorry. Uh, so the first time I met you, you had just, within a, the, a couple of months, come on at Goose Island as assistant brewmaster. I was, and now, I was head brewer there. You're head brewer, brewer, yes. And now you're the brewmaster. So yeah, yeah. how is it to, to take that step up? It's been very challenging. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of decisions that um, that uh, have been difficult ones to make, and um, um, and uh, so it, it, and I'm still working into it. Um, the, the the fellow who was brewmaster before, um, Greg Hall, he uh, he was a, I think he a, a, a visionary and really uh, could see. Uh, you know, he developed some beers that were, that were way ahead of their time. Matilda, for instance, we've been making this beer for 10 years. And then Bourbon County Stout, we've been making that for more than 10 years. Um, so we've been we've been fooling around with uh, Britannomyces. We've been fooling around with, with on, a, on a production scale with bourbon aged beers for longer than pretty much anybody, you know? Some people have dabbled with it early on. We uh, really uh, took on the mantle of these things. And so that's my biggest challenge, is making sure that I'm looking forward enough so that um, I can continue to stay, uh, continue, to, you know, in his visionary footsteps. And I'm cheating, you know, <laughs> by using the talents of our brewers, you know. So I don't know that that's cheating, really. <laughs> it's using the tools available to you. I need I need all the damn help I can get, and uh, luckily I have a really good uh, group of people there. So we have uh, our. Uh, We've got a we've got a, a, a wildly inventive group, and they've been able to uh, innovate in very with with not many resources. Now they're going to have and the, the shortest uh, the, the thing is shortest supply was time, and now you know we added staff. They're going to have time to brew these special beers. They're going to brew them together. They're going to watch the fermentations. They're going to go out in the marketplace and present these beers, and and they're going to. We talked about how are you going to, how are we going to name these beers, and we're going to name them after the people who created them. So it'll be Keith and Joel, Keith and Joel's whatever, uh, you know, Blueberry Nitro Stout. It's a joke, we're not, but who knows? <laughs> no. Anyway, well, I certainly, for one, look forward to uh, the future at Goose Island. You're making great beers now, and I look forward to whatever you bring to the to the picture. So. Thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time here at GABF. Cheers. Have a good time. You too.